You know, um, I had a most unusual experience going back a few years. I was in the Horsham Church and we were worshipping this Sunday night and, um, and the worship became so intense it was almost like a blanket that was covering, covering us. I'm standing in the front row and uh, all of a sudden I started to have this picture come into my mind and as I'm looking out it's, it's almost like we were in a bubble and outside of this bubble were all of these people and they seemed to be cheering us on. It was so we weren't playing footy, we were worshipping God but here they were just cheering us on and I looked and I saw just one person I knew, it was my great uncle, he used to have a, a mission in, in England and uh, a seaman's mission and he seemed to be really cheering me on. The Bible says that we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. You know, I thought heaven perhaps was tr trillions of miles away. Then I said, well, maybe it's not so far or maybe God can show up. See, God's the God of the living, not the dead. Hallelujah. And when you go absent from the body, present with the Lord, okay, we have a hope. We don't have to be afraid of dying. And uh, in fact, the resurrection was the foundation stone of the Christian faith. Paul rested his case on the bodily resurrection of Jesus in 1 Corinthians 15, 14. And if Christ be not risen, he said, then is our preaching vain. And your faith is also vain. So if Jesus did rise again, it's the most sensa sensational event in history. And it is, isn't it? The most sensational event in history. We know where we've come from. We know that God has a plan and a purpose for our life. And of course we know where we're going. If Jesus didn't rise again, his Christianity would just simply be a museum piece, no more. No objective validity or reality. Just a wishful thought. Martyrs and missionaries who gave their lives were perhaps deluded poor fools. But the enemies attacked the resurrection because it's the crux of the matter. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we have hope. Because he lives, we don't fear death. Because he lives, we know that God has got an unfolding plan as we heard today. And we don't have to be fearful of what the future holds because we know who holds the future and his name is Jesus. Let's say it. Jesus. Jesus. Let's say it again. Jesus. He holds my future. He holds your future. Hallelujah. You know, we think of, uh, you know, some of the things that reinforce uh, our faith in, the, in resurrection. Number one, it's the Christian church. Hands up those that were there this morning. Anyone there this morning? Unbelievable, eh? Sorry you missed it. It was wonderful. I, I was so blessed. I love evangelistic preaching. And man, oh man, that young woman can preach. And, and I was so, so blessed. What a glorious, glorious testimony to the resurrection of Jesus. I saw, I saw it on TV. I was watching the news. And uh, they went through all the different churches. And the announcer, oh yeah, this is that, this is that, this is that. And they came to paradise. And they were showing photos of paradise on the ABC. And the girl was absolutely wrapped. And when they switched away from it, she was glued like this. <laughs> she was looking at something she hadn't seen before, obviously. But the Christian church is a great testimony to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The fact that we're meeting on Sunday. The fact that we've got the New Testament. And of course the empty tomb and the appearances of Jesus. You know, the, the critics have said that the disciples stole the body of Jesus. But they were martyred for their belief in the resurrection. Others say that authorities or the Romans moved the body. Why didn't they produce it then? They say the women went to the wrong tomb, but there was no other tomb there. It was a private cemetery. And then there was the swoon theory that Jesus didn't really die. He only swooned, which would make Jesus and the disciples a liar. Explanation. The only theory that explains the empty tomb is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. When we look at the recorded appearances of Jesus over a period of 40 days with 10 recorded appearances to a variety of times, places and people, one to 500 assembled eyewitnesses. Somebody said, yeah, but they were all hallucinating. You know, hallucinations only occur to very nervous and imaginative, nervous people, you know, and 500 wouldn't be classified like that, I'm sure. One must believe intensely to have hallucina hallucination. 
But you see, the disciples were persuaded against their, their, their wills. Then we look at the change in the disciples, how Peter denied Jesus three times and then he went out front and centre and preached the message and 3,000 people got saved on the day of Pentecost. What a tremendous difference he's made. Hallelujah. Only the reality of the bodily resurrection of Christ could have produced this change. A beautiful summary, Canon Westcott said this, Indeed, taking all the evidence together, it is not too much to say that there is no historic incident better or more variously supported than the resurrection of Christ. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. The evidence for the resurrection up close and personal. If Jesus rose from the dead, he's alive today. Hands up those that spoke to him today. Anybody speak to him today? Yeah, we did, eh? We talked to him. Praise God. And he is alive today, powerful to change those who invite him into their lives. Thousands all say their lives have been revolutionised by Jesus Christ. Jesus has done what he said he would do. And he still invites us to come and see. <clears throat> As Jesus was stood beside the tomb of Lazarus, to demonstrate his awesome power, he said to, to one of the girls, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. And so Jesus Christ himself has all the power to resurrect whoever, whenever he wants to. He is the resurrection power himself. And one day he's going to call and okay, the graves will be opened and things will change. Jesus Christ and him alone is the all authority and all power to be able to cause dead bodies to come back to life again. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Not only is Jesus the resurrection, but he will also be the animating life principle that's in our resurrected bodies. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So all of us today that have lost loved ones, we have a firm confidence, okay, that we're going to see them again and that they will live. And whoever lives and believeth in me, Jesus said, shall never die. Do you believe this? So brothers and sisters, we don't have to worry about dying, okay? All we have to be concerned about is fulfilling the race that's been set before us. That's all we have to worry about because when our job is finished here, Jesus is going to take us home. The Bible says absent from the body and present with the Lord Jesus Christ. But it says in Romans 8.11, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus,